Hi lovelies! I'm so curious how you are on this beautiful Tuesday. <sighs> it is so good to be able to come hang out with you live again. It was, um, it's been a couple weeks, but... Let's do a couple things first here real quick. I have this cup. I have this cup with, it is full of names, like three more names got put in it yesterday, and more names are getting added to it all of the time. And the last person whose name came out of this cup actually got a free one hour one-on-one -on -one with me. So having your name in this cup is very lucrative. <laughs> That's a $250 value, $55 value. So the way you get your name in this cup is to share this video publicly and drop shared in the comments for me so that I know you shared it so I can get your name in the cup. And we are actually doing a drawing on Thursday. So get your name in the cup. Okay. Because my videos often get shares and replays, I just want to introduce myself really quick. My name is Sarah Jordan, and if you are new to my world, I would love it if you would drop new in the comments, like if this is the first video you've ever seen with me. Oh, welcome, 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 and if you have been hanging with me for a while, I'm so glad that you are here. I help women with their physical, mental, spiritual, financial, and emotional health through looking at cycles. Yes. Every woman has a cycle, whether you bleed or not, you energetically still have a cycle. But we look at a broad spectrum cycle because there's annual cycles, there's monthly cycles, there's weekly cycles, there's daily cycles, and then there's even bigger cycles, which is really, really cool. And today I want to follow up to my post last night. I asked for y'all to drop in the comments what natural remedies you have found that actually are effective for depression and it was in mind of future clients I have had depression I have had anxiety what I found in my journey the first time the first time that I could say yes I was depressed and it was hindsight because I couldn't say it in the moment was 2012 and it was postpartum depression but it was like nine months before I started to feel like me again and then I got pregnant and it, mine goes away when I get pregnant. Like whatever happens hormonally, it changes it and it, it just goes away. But if I haven't gotten back to a good place before I get pregnant again, after that pregnancy, it seems like it compounds upon itself. And so I had that happen a couple of times too, where it just got worse after I gave birth. And so that is part of what I teach pregnant women is how to have a postpartum that is going to be healing to your body instead of leaving you depressed. And I personally was suicidal for months after I had this beautiful baby in my arms. And yet I didn't feel like I should even be here. And so I teach pregnant women what I learned. I did four pregnancies. Two of them were live births. Two of them were not where I had extreme depression after each and every single one of them. And then I had my two live births that were my daughter's. And I did things completely different and it completely changed my mental state, my physical state after in the, in the postpartum period. And so I, I was chatting with a potential client yesterday, a uh, one-on-one -on -one potential client. And the two things that she brought up were anxiety and stress. But as I observed her throughout our chat, and then as I went through the evening yesterday evening, thinking through it and thinking about the different things that I observed in her, I was like, honestly, she has depression in some of the ways that I had depression five, six years ago. And what I learned through my healing journey so far is that depression is like a, it's an umbrella and underneath of it is anxiety, is overwhelm, is sensory overwhelm, is all of these other things that we try and do individual diagnoses for. And in some cases, I think that that's correct. And I am not a doctor. I don't have a medical professional license at all. This is my own research and what I have found to be true in myself. But all of these different things are kind of under this, this umbrella of, of what was depression. So then I was like, okay, so in talking to her, if it's not just not handling stress well, if it's not just anxiety, if we're looking at this on a broad spectrum and I see it as what I saw in myself as depression, 
what is the thing that I could tell her to do that helped me? Uh, <laughs> I didn't know, which is why I asked the question because there wasn't one thing. And y'all have put, like, I just checked before I did started this live video. There are 87 comments on that post and only one of those comments is mine. 87 different comments from different people. Some of them overlap. Like a CBD was a common response. Rest and outside was a common response. But not a single one of those 87 comments, 86 because one of them was mine, are the same. <laughs> the same thing does not work for every single individual. And so I continued to chew on this as these comments poured in yesterday and this morning. I continued to think this through. I actually asked my, my husband point blank. I was like, what if someone were to ask you what cured your wife of depression, what would you say? And he looked at me and he's like, diet. And then I walked him through what I actually meant. I was like, oh, um, no. <laughs> uh, one of the most healthy times of my life was in 2016. It was April, May, and June of 2016. I feel like I was eating very, very, very well for myself at that point. And it was the most dead inside feeling ever. So what I was doing on the outside diet wise was actually everything that you're supposed to do to feel good. And yet I didn't. I was like, no, I don't think it could be diet. He's like, but since you did 75 fem, you've, you've been perkier. I'm like, Cody, I haven't been depressed in four years, five years, six years. Okay. Well, you've been happier since you did 75 fem in October. <laughs> Okay, babe, thanks. So 75 Fem helps elevate your mood, even if you already were in a good state before 75 Fem. So there's that. But the more I ran this through my head, as like rest was huge for me. Sleep was huge for me. And to this day, if I don't get enough sleep, I am a bear. I am. You don't want to be around me if I have not had enough sleep multiple days in a row. I can go a day. I can go two days get to the four or five day mark where I've had like five, six hours of sleep or less. I need eight and I'm, I'm not a happy camper, but the bad, the worst days, the days where like considering various avenues of removing myself from this planet went through my head were when I had compounded lack of sleep. Lack of sleep, lack of sleep, lack of sleep, lack of sleep. And so I was like, okay, that was a huge thing for me, but B vitamins were also a huge thing for me. Vitamin D was actually a huge thing for me also. Magnesium was a huge thing for me. Understanding that vitamin D was a hormone and that my body needed enough magnesium in order to make the hormone vitamin D rather than just supplementing the hormone vitamin D was a huge thing for me. Knowing that Epsom salt is actually magnesium and I needed an Epsom salt bath on a regular basis in order to make the vitamin D or in order to absorb the vitamin D that I was consuming and make it benefit me. All of these things were huge. I had found very specific oils in the summer of 2016. I told you April, May, and June of 2016 were months that I was eating probably the best I had eaten in five years, six years. And I have had, you know, spouts in between since then that, that were not very good, but I, my mood was better. June of 2016, I found some very targeted oil regimens that really pulled me out of the depths of depression that I'd been in for a year, because in May of 2015, we delivered a stillborn baby at the 24 week mark. That was, that was awful. And then just a couple months later, I had a 10 week miscarriage. And so, like I said at the beginning of this video, it all just compounded. And so I had a year of depression there, but it was in June of 2016 that I found some targeted oil things, essential oils that were very, very beneficial to me. But as I'm sitting here thinking of this potential client that I talked to yesterday, I was like, well, I could tell them to use this, this, and this oil. But also sleep was huge for me and the B was huge for me and the D was huge for me. And then the biggest thing I think that has made the hugest difference in the last year for me and the, the bad depression, it's been basically gone since 2016. 
the bad, bad, ugly depression. Have I had some moments here and there where I didn't get enough sleep? Yes. Do we all have some moments here and there where we didn't get enough sleep? Yes. Have I had some snappy moments where I was not in self-control and, you know, my children got the brunt of it? Yes. Have we all done that? Yes. But when I really got to thinking about it, it something very, very huge for me in the last year, little over a year, and I say that I have done a huge amount of healing in the last 12, 15 months, and I have. And when someone comes to me and says, well, what have you done? There's not a single statement that I can give of what I have done. But I think I may have something that I can leave you with. And someone, a couple people in, in the, the comments yesterday had mentioned personal development. And now that sounds really what really again Tony Robbins stuff are you serious and no it's not Tony Robbins stuff but learning how to love me learning how to trust me learning how to respect me and the sleep thing genuinely was self-love and self-respect because the 2016 version of me would stay up and do the dishes so I could wake up to a clean sink. And then I'd get less sleep and then I'd be worse the next day. But I had a clean sink. At that point in my life, it would have benefited me more to go to bed and do the dishes in the morning. This me now often leaves dishes in the sink at night because I know the value of me sleeping and I have enough respect for me to go to bed knowing full well the dishes will get done in the morning I have enough love for me now to go to bed knowing that the dishes will get done in the morning I have enough trust in me now that I can go to bed trusting that the dishes will get done in the morning. And so if you're someone who is feeling off, maybe you don't have a clinical diagnosis. I never had a clinical diagnosis of anxiety, of depression, of sensory processing disorder, of any of these things. I just did my research and I did it well. So if you're someone who has felt off, I encourage you to go look at the post yesterday with over 87 different options of avenues that could help yourself. But I also want to leave you with this question of do you love yourself enough to do the things that are in the comments on that post? Do you respect yourself enough to do the things that are in the comments on that post? Do you trust yourself enough to do the things that are in the comments on that post? In my last year and a half of, of growth, of healing, I'm currently in a trauma certification course and the amount of wow that has been involved in that is just huge. But in the, my last 18 months of healing, I have realized how little I did trust, love, and respect myself. And there was a point in December of 2020 that someone who I have learned from, and I've learned from like six or eight different mentors in the last year, one of them had said, basic hygiene is not self-care. You want to talk about triggered? This is the girl who like literally would have to write down brush teeth. And maybe you're that girl. I wrestled with that statement for probably six or eight months. Basic hygiene is not self-care. I wanted to argue with it. I wanted to fight it. I'm sure that I journaled about it. Basic hygiene is self-care. 
I don't take care of my teeth, they're gonna fall out. Basic hygiene is not self-care. It's just basic. It's something that does indeed have to happen, but to a depressed individual, basic hygiene is self-care. But the thing about being triggered like that the thing about having someone make a statement like that and you just going off. I had grown enough at that point to recognize that I had an opportunity to be activated. I had grown enough at that point to realize that I was triggered and I could choose to be triggered into a place of <clears throat> or I could be choose to be triggered into a place of, huh, maybe I should explore that a little bit more. I chose the huh. And what I found was how little I actually loved and respected and trusted myself. And so when I look back at the 2015, 2016 version of me that was in the depths of the lowest place I've ever been, I didn't have enough self-respect to go shower. I didn't have enough self-love to go shower. That is probably the thing that has healed me the most. There's a lot of physical things that you can do, the supplements that you can drink or the supplements that you can take, the sunshine that you can get, the exercise that you can do. And P.S. exercise did not help me because I had adrenal fatigue and it made it worse. So if you're someone who's been where I was and is currently where, where I was and someone's telling you to exercise and it just zaps you, stop. Come talk to me about adrenal fatigue because <laughs> that just made it worse. It made the whole gamut worse. So there are physical things that you can do. But at the end of the day, when I look back, I began to love me more. I began to give me grace more. I began to leave the dishes in the sink at night. And told the critic to be quiet. That it would be okay that they would still be there in the morning. Well, what if somebody shows up? Maybe they'll help you do the dishes. What if, what if, what if? You know what? It doesn't matter. Because I don't know if someone's going to show up or not, and neither do you. What was it? Shh. I'm going to bed now. Good night. You have that ability also. And if you're someone who is where I was, and you're like, I don't know, Sarah. I don't know how. I don't know where to start. I don't know how to begin. I would love to visit with you. We can have a quick 20-minute discovery call. It's completely complimentary. We can see where you're at. We can see if we, our energy connects at all. And we can explore some one-on-one -on -one to move you through some of this. Because I have been in some ugly places. And I have come through in a huge, beautiful way. Amy, what if... Um, Amy, I've had a lot of... A lot of that. that I'd love to talk to you about. I'm not going to talk to, speak to that publicly right now, but I would be willing to talk to you about that. Amy also says, or who is feeling lucky to get a shower more than once a week? There was a time I actually thought that I was doing myself a favor and I was doing no poo for my hair. And so it was like, well, I don't need to. And I still only shower about every two to three days. But for me, that's actually healthy. The once a week, once every, more than once a week, that wasn't healthy for me. Oh, Amy. Oh, my gosh, Amy. Oh, friend. Oh, I love you, dear. So if this resonated with you, if you have been in that place or if you are currently in that place and you're like, I know that there's something off. I don't have a clinical diagnosis, and like I said, I never did either. But I know something is off. You know, you know when something is off. And you'd like someone to hold your hand and celebrate your wins with you week after week of, I did shower five, five times this week or three times this week. You want someone to hold, hold your hand and celebrate that with you and say, okay, what's the next step? And then celebrate with you the week next after that and say, yes, you did this next step. This is awesome. Someone who has been in a place of literal self-hate. I have the journal to prove it. 
and is now in a space of amazing, amazing love and respect and trust for myself. And you're like, I'm here, but I want to get here. I would love to visit with you about that. Just jump in Messenger, say you'd like a discovery call, and let's, let's chat. Okay? And if this landed with you, or you're thinking of someone as you have listened to this, do share this content, because you never know who is where I was that's going to see it, and this will change their entire world. And if you do share it, drop it in the comments, and I'll get you in a drawing cup. I love you all.